We were somewhere around Barstow, on the edge of the desert, when the drugs began to take hold. You're either in or you're out. Right now. Wanna gamble? I never want to hear those words out of your mouth again. Gambling is not your problem. Has anybody ever told you before your bad luck? Most gamblers, when they go to gamble, they go to win. Those were my mother's dying words. When we go to gamble, we go to lose. Show me the money. Let's get out of here, man. Show you my Honestly, like, let's just go. Let's go to Vegas. It's the Sports Memory Vegas pregame show. Championship weekend in college basketball. The tourney is feels like it's already here. Newman, that Thursday, Friday was about as good as you get in the actual tournament. I mean, there were, I mean, maybe not the buzzer beaters, but the upsets. I mean, there was a few buzzer beaters. There was a bunch of overtime games too. So yeah. I mean, that 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 made it more fun, uh, taking it down to the wire. Some near uh, near buzzer beaters and stuff like that. How was your work production the past two days? Uh, I mean, I definitely had to stay focused, but I had a second monitor yeah. off to the side that had the games going. And so, honestly, the hardest part was like flipping back and forth between games. <laughs> <laughs> on there my, were, on my, yeah, there's so on many. My, I was not prepared. Instead of my TV. <laughs> totally. Uh, IU plays at, played at 1130 the past two days. Let me tell you, I was super productive from about 730 to 1130. Hopefully my boss isn't watching because I did not do a whole lot of work from about 12 to 5 the past two days. <laughs> um, uh, and I certainly won't be doing it again. Uh, the Hoosiers somehow find their way back in the tournament um, for the first time in over a half a decade. Uh, we'll talk about that game later. But um, is Texas A&M and Indiana kind of the story of the week so far? Um, definitely up there uh, in terms of stories that are going. Uh, those are two of the teams that are, you know, really pushing in. Both teams um, were out. And making Both good teams runs. were out yeah. before, before Thursday. Yeah, for sure. So wild. Uh, we're going to cover uh, like we always do. We're going to cover college basketball, NHL, NBA today. Um, but with the we're going to focus on kind of the big games like we normally do. But I, Newman, I wanted to start with bid stealers. We've been talking about it now for the past couple weeks. Um, and we have we have two significant ones here. Um, first, we'll start with SLU, uh, St. Louis University. Uh, versus Davidson, who kind of everyone knows. Uh, there was a, a three-point shooter that some may be a fan of that went to Davidson and had an NCAA tournament run. Is he any um, good? Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Davidson's a three-and-a-half-point favorite. But what I want to ask you is, if SLU wins this game, who does it knock out? Does it knock out Michigan, Xavier, SMU? Kind of who? what team should be sweating if SL, SLU um wins this game today yeah i think all three of those teams that need need to be sweating like a team like wake forest that um had a chance to you know punch its ticket uh yep. goes out early in the acc tournament so that's another team that's definitely you know sweating at this point um but yeah any of those teams that really suffered an early loss in their tournament and they were already on the bubble that's that's definitely not good for them yeah so um, xavier has the amount of wins but they don't have the good wins Michigan has the good wins, but just doesn't have a lot of wins. They're having, they only have 17. So I think that if there is a team that they're probably going to give a benefit of the doubt to, it is Michigan, given what they've done the last several years. Um, they have really good players, obviously Hunter Dickinson and stuff. So, and, and playing in the big 10, they're going to be like, Oh, you know, they played in the big 10. They played a tough schedule. Yes. They yep. didn't necessarily have a great year, but all other things being, you know, the same, they're going to value those wins over some other teams. So I would say Michigan's probably the safest out of them. But if we get a few more teams that steal some bids, then obviously that hurts. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that, that's that's a game that I will luckily not have to worry about. But, you know, if you're if you're a uh, if you're an Oklahoma Wake Forest, Virginia Tech fan, um, that's that's a game you want to watch. Uh, making sure St. Louis does not steal a bid. 
Uh, all right, let's jump to the American who, who, here. Who you got? Who you got? <laughs> I got Davidson. Um, they've been Given there. The three and a half points. Th- three and a half points. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm going to take the favorite here, um, mostly because uh, I'm. I'm not rooting for chaos. I kind of want things to be nice and smooth. Oh, says the guy who went to Indiana. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that Davidson's probably going to wind up pulling this game out. They're just so well coached. Their coach has been there for a long time. Obviously, knows what he's doing. He's done a really good job for years. Yep. Um, so that's one of those where there, there's a reason they're in already, um, the, and they're not sweating it out, but they're definitely going to be well coached. Uh, winning a bunch of games in these tournaments is, can become very heavy and emotionally draining, and at some point... Uh, a team like SLU, the luck runs out. So, yep, yep, yeah. The, the, the Cinderella slipper may or may not fall off. Davidson's an 11 seed right now by Lenardi. I mean, you're when you say comfortable, Davidson's not worried about this game, which you know, um, that's, yeah, that's either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on which way you look at it. Uh, but yeah, we're both on uh, both on the Davidson side. Uh, all right, let's jump to the American. Um, we have two teams, um, Memphis firmly in uh, a month ago, Memphis was horrible, but Memphis has been one of the best teams in the past month. They went from on the bubble to potentially out to it. They're an eight seed um, in Lenardi's most recent and SMU is right on the bubble. Um, they are there as the, one of the last four in um, they need to win to get in right. Newman. Probably. Um, because they could get pushed out by somebody else stealing a bid too. If you're the last yep. four in and you don't take care of business yourself, but <clears throat> Memphis is just ultra talented, right? Like they recruit at a super high level, especially for the AAC um, the conference that they play in. They're one of the higher ranked teams in recruiting. Insert year SMU their... recruiting joke. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yes, sure. They play in Dallas, but that, that what's King in football in, in Texas football, right? So, I mean, most of their athletes are probably not playing a lot of basketball in general. Um, and then I don't know to me, SMU's just, they haven't taken that NAL. It's not, it's a sleeping giant, but they haven't awoken yet as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So um, in this respect, I'm going to lean Memphis because they are way more talented. Uh, even though, you know, I don't necessarily think that Anthony Hardaway is that great of a coach. No, no, <laughs> No, they no, they are not. Um, I'm taking Memphis too. Again, they're just playing really, really well. Um, and like I said, MS SMU is a desperate team. But I mean, you just talked about it with Michigan. I mean, if it happens every year to the poor mid majors, I mean, if SMU is getting compared to Michigan, Xavier, Oklahoma, Wake Forest, I, I think the big conferences with the in the big team names are going to get the bid over SMU. So, um, sorry, SLU. Sorry, SMU. Um, I don't see either one of you um, getting into the tournament. Not, not, not today. Not this year. All right, let's move down to the SEC tournament down in Tampa. Uh, how's how's the vibe been for the SEC tournament? Has it been a good turnout? Has has uh, is that is that a normal location for the SEC tournament? Um, so it is going to be there. Uh, it's there this year. And then mm-hmm. it is going to be in Nashville till 2035. So no, not a typical location <laughs> <laughs> for the SEC basketball third of it. Um, but uh, it has been down here before. Occasionally, the ACC pops in once in a while, and the and the SEC um, because it's it's a great location. Obviously, it's spring break time. So and it's in people... it's in Emily, right? It's in the hockey. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I mean that facility Burr. does has done a lot of no. I mean it won't be that cold. Um, they don't have to keep it as cold without the ice being there. But also, uh, I mean, it's kind of, it's not, I don't think it's that cold to begin with when you're in there hanging out. So, uh, I mean, to me, I would, I would much rather them keep it that cold because it'll be nice and comfortable, uh, for, you know, all the fans, obviously the on ice or on court temperature does not need to be that cold though. Um, but anyway, yeah, I was setting up as a very bad joke because Texas A&M has been holding teams to frigid shooting percentages. Um, Texas A&M has made this run with defense. So we have, this is going to be a theme throughout today. We have a little bit of a strength for strength. Arkansas can light it up. It starts yeah. with J.D. Note, um, followed by Jalen Williams. Musselman likes to get out and run, likes to shoot a lot of threes. But Texas A&M has just been playing swarming defense. 
Do you think this uh, defensive run continues for Buzz Williams and Texas A&M, or does Arkansas just shoot like they have been for, for the past two or three weeks? So this goes back to what I was talking about with the tired legs. I think that at some point for Texas A&M, that's going to catch up to them. Um, and it's not it's like hard to keep a, running with Arkansas. It's a bad. And it's, and it's, and it's not like they're playing a team that's cold either, right? So no. uh, a couple the first, uh, last yesterday they played a team that really hadn't played, you know, um, earlier in the tournament. So they were, you know, potentially a little bit, you know, l- not loose, right? Yep. Well, now they are, and now Texas A&M's on what day three, right? So yep. this is the day that the legs start really coming into play here. Um, a team like that can be could absolutely be tired in respect to that. And Arkansas is really good. I actually like Musselman quite a lot. Um, And it's just, it's hard for me to see them being able to keep up the intensity that they have to play with in order to play that kind of defense for, you know, another day here. Um, So I'm probably going to pick against Texas A&M and should they win, I'll pick against them tomorrow too. (laughs) Yeah. Arkansas is really trying to play themselves up into that three line. Um, Right now they're, they're a four seed. Um, I think there's a huge difference in being a three and a four seed because you don't have to play that four or five, um, which which is always really tough in the second round. So I think Arkansas mm-hmm. is going to be super motivated. Um, I'm not pulling an upset here. Six and a half is a lot. Um, six, that that seems to be kind of a theme up and down Vegas's board today. I think Texas A&M's defense does keep this close. But yeah, I... I'm with you on the tired legs and just the way Arkansas plays. It's a, it's a bad matchup um, for, for, you know, Texas A&M isn't, doesn't have the studs they, they have had the past few years. And um, yeah, I think Arkansas gets into the final tomorrow. And you think they cover, right? I think they cover. Yep. Yeah. But I think it's a, it's a super good line. Like I would, that's, that's tough. I, I do think this is probably a seven to eight point game. All right, let's stay in the SEC to not the best game of the day, even though we got a border war in Tampa. Number five, Kentucky, playing number nine, Tennessee. These teams have split this year. Kentucky won in Rupp. uh, Tennessee won in Knoxville. Um, How do you see this game playing? Because, uh, man, Kentucky can turn it on, but then they can kind of turn it off. Um, I, I'm, I'm worried about, uh, I'm worried about the Wildcats a little bit. I'm not, um, it almost blew it against Vanderbilt. Yeah, but I think Vanderbilt's good. Like, like underratedly good. Yeah, Scott, good. Scotty Pippen Jr. Uh, is a stud and they, I don't know. They, they definitely schemed it up and, and played with a lot of intensity in that game, understanding what's on the line. I don't think Tennessee has as much on the line. They're firmly in the tournament. Um, this is really just comes down to, you know, who's, who's got the better players and who's got more desire. Kentucky's finally healthy, completely healthy. They haven't been, um, several of their other, other matchups, um, with Wheeler and Ty Ty Thompson missing some games and stuff like that. Um, Oscar playing great, um, in front of his mom who, you know, got to fly in. Uh, so I think Kentucky's going to be super motivated in this game. Two and a half points is not anything scary. I'm definitely going to take the better team here in Kentucky in regards to this game. Um, but I, I mean, I'd expect both these teams to fair, to travel pretty well. Uh, yep. you know, it's not, it's not very far, uh, for a team like, you know, uh, Tennessee fans, a lot not of them live in Nashville, uh, all throughout the country kind of stuff like that. And, you know, Kentucky's everywhere. So Dude, there was uh, a lot of blue in last night's game, a lot of blue, yeah. uh, yeah. Real quick here, I wanted a kind of a big topic, I think, is who gets that remaining number one seed. I think Arizona's probably locked in, Gonzaga's locked in, Kansas is locked in. But with Baylor losing, it's mm-hmm. kind of Duke or Kentucky who gets that last one seed. Um, I'd lean Kentucky, but uh, what, what about you? I'd lean Kentucky, too, especially if they, you know, take care of business. Yes. Because... Um, the SEC has just been a much tougher conference, right? So because Purdue isn't moving up, even if they win. Auburn lost; they're not doing it. Um, Illinois lost. Illinois lost. So yeah, I mean, you look at it. I mean that that one line is firmly there for for Duke or Kentucky. Um, and again, that that's a really really big deal because that that seven and ten game is tough. It's way way easier than the eight nine game. Um, yeah, in, in my opinion. So that's that's a storyline that I definitely think everyone should be following, whether Duke or Kentucky get that last one seed. Um, but we're both yeah. taking Kentucky. 
right? Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, two and a half. Again, I would have thought this line would have been six and a half or six like the rest I think of them. This has something to do with like the time of the games and stuff. Because last night's Kentucky game started a little bit late. Today it's going to be a yep. little earlier. So that's less than 24 hours for the guys to really get fresh and kind of thing. Whereas Tennessee has a little bit like almost same amount of time, a little bit longer. Um, so that I think that'll play a factor uh, in regards to today. Um, yeah. in, in, my in, big at factor least that's is they're thinking in the line. I mean, the Kentucky has like three guys averaging over 15 points. Tennessee doesn't have one. I just don't think Tennessee can score with Kentucky. Kentucky's going to go on a run. They're going to go on an 8-10-0 run, and I just don't think Tennessee can do the same. Um, That's the thing about Kentucky. They're, they're, I mean, they're a really good team here, so they can beat you however you need to be beaten, right? They got guys who can shoot. They got guys who can press the ball. They got guys who can kick and drive and all that kind of stuff. And they got Oscar down low. So <clears throat> if they need to the run the game on jump shots now, Ty Ty's hitting jump shots now. Like yeah. those are two guys that predominantly drive to the basket. If those guys are hitting jump shots, the entire country needs to look out because. Well, when, when they're both playing, they're able to do that. So when they haven't been playing together, which has been kind of the last, I don't know, month basically for Kentucky, uh, you've only had one, one option, right? So, you know, they're not able to do as much of the drive and kick to each other because they're not both on the floor. Um, and now they are. So that's uh that plays a big difference, especially with the style of offense that Kentucky wants to run. God, they, I mean, it's it's fun. I mean, it, I, I hate saying that because it's, you know, it's uh it's Kentucky, but man, it's up and down, it's dunks, it's it's fly, it's flying. It's fun. Yeah, I mean, like the last night's game against Vanderbilt, I thought Vanderbilt just played well, and that was why they were in the game. I didn't think Kentucky played poorly in any in any shape or form. You know what I mean? Defense like, is sometimes optional for the Wildcats. Sometimes. Yeah, but it wasn't last night. <laughs> like they they took Scotty Pippen Jr. basically out of the game, um, which is an impressive feat considering what he what he's done all year. And isn't he like uh like a what like an all conference player this year? So oh, for sure. Yeah. Sure. All right, let's get to the game uh, I want to talk about. Let's jump to the Big Ten. Do you uh, want to talk about it? <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. Um, Indiana going against number 24, Iowa. Iowa is a six-point favorite. This is my stinky line of the day. Um, Indiana was only a three-point dog against Illinois and only a two-and-a-half-point dog against um, against Michigan. I don't think this is a homer pick to say I, I'm, I'm not taking Indiana to win, but I'm taking Indiana to cover. Um, yeah. Six points is a ton of points for a, for a team playing really re- playing its best basketball right now. Yeah, okay. I just <clears> – Iowa <throat> can really shoot the three. They're live by the three, die by the three kind of team at this point. Yep. Um, and I don't know that that's going to continue to play out that great uh, here. I expect Indiana to be able to go down and get him in foul trouble with uh, TJD and just create a lot of problems. He's been a man. He's averaged about 21 and a half, 22 points in the two, in two games. I mean, yeah, he, he, he feels like he's a man on a mission, right? Um, so I think that that absolutely plays a factor in this game. Uh, I would say that it definitely be worth taking some Indiana money line. There's gotta be some good juice on that. Um, but in terms Bunny of, Newman, you know, plus two twenty. Yeah, so that, that's definitely worth worth sprinkling some action on for sure. Um, but ultimately, I would definitely say Indiana and the points here is definitely the play. Six points is so much points. Yeah, that's that's the way I'm going um, for sure. But here, uh, Iowa doesn't have any bigs. They have none. They, they play a five-out offense. Their centers shoot threes. Um, I think you hit the nail on the head there that if Iowa hits – they may they could beat anyone, but they also could sure, absolutely beat, beat by anyone. Um, they do have a NBA top ten pick in Keegan Murray, um, but uh, Indiana when they've faced Johnny Davis and Jaden Ivey, they'll let them go off, and then they'll they'll kind of collapse on everyone else because it doesn't matter if one guy scores thirty five and nobody else scores over ten. Right. I think that's going to be Indiana's strategy is let Keegan Murray have his and just make sure you don't leave Bohannon. Make sure you don't leave those other shooters. Make sure, hey, let let Murray drive. Let Murray do his 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 thing around the, the free throw line, but just close up everything else. Um and and yeah, I mean I think 
Indiana right now is an 11 seed. They can move up to the 10. Um, and I think, I, I yeah, I'm, I'm Indiana plus six all day. And if you're Indiana, you probably don't want to move up higher than 10. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but moving up to an eight nine is not a good thing. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's jump to the other game here. Uh, Michigan State Purdue. Man, you you've said it over the past few weekends. Newman Izzo has his team playing the best basketball, which seems to happen every year. I think Michigan State might be the most well rounded team in the Big Ten, and I think they might be the big, the scariest six or seven seed going into the tournament next week yeah i'm on michigan state here six points is too much in my opinion for izzo uh, for this yeah. matchup yeah uh there's a team that could win outright you want you might want to parlay uh indiana and michigan state there and we'll, we'll just see what happens um i mean that's got to be some some good juice you don't have to put a lot down in order to take that um, 240 and 220 yeah you're gonna get about 10 to 1 odds there so i mean that's definitely worth throwing a little bit of cash on and uh i mean at the end of the day here i just I trust uh, Tom Izzo a little bit more than I trust Matt Painter. I mean, yeah, I mean, Jaden Ivey's really good. Purdue has a lot of really good players. They're a team that has a chance to win a national championship this year. But um, there's something about Michigan State at this time of year. It, it, end of March, they make a lot of runs in these tournaments like this for a reason, and because Izzo really knows what he's doing. And I mean, I've seen I've seen Michigan State literally out rebound Purdue despite their big seven footers earlier this season. So to me, I. There's something that Michigan State has in their back pocket, and I trust Izzo to make adjustments more than I trust Matt, Matt Painter. Yeah, absolutely. And look at Purdue's last four games. They lost they, they lost to Michigan State not even two weeks ago. They lost to Wisconsin. They only beat IU by two at home, and IU was up five with less than two minutes ago in that game. And then uh, Penn State was winning at halftime yesterday, and they only beat Penn State by eight. Purdue is floundering a little bit. They have not made well the last two weeks. They're a really good team. They have really good players. Um, but I, I'm and I'm not just saying this because I'm an IU fan. I just spent the past five minutes uh, complimenting Kentucky. But right now, Purdue could play USC in the second round. Who I think I like USC in that seven two game in the round of thirty two. Um, if things if things would all shake out how they do. And in, um, in the end field, shout out to the New Deal. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Locking them up. Um, but personally, I want to see Indiana Purdue round three. Indiana won by three. Purdue won by two. The entire Indi- city of Indianapolis is hoping for an Indiana Purdue Big Ten championship. That would that. That, would, that would be electric. <laughs> that would be electric. All right, let's jump to the uh, Big Twelve, the best conference of the year. Um, their championship is today. Texas Tech continues to just win games um, with Bryson Williams continues to be a, to a diaper dandy. Um, but Kansas giving two points, man, it just seems like Bill Self, similar to what we were saying with Izzo. Uh, same with what we're saying with Kentucky. I mean, Kansas is Kansas has righted their ship. Um, and I, I think I think they have too many guys for Texas Tech. Newman. I mean, if you're Kansas. You win here, Duke and Kentucky lose. You know, maybe you maybe you have a chance at that one seed. Um, but they're already a one seed in Lenardi's. They're already (laughs) one. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that that's a done deal for sure, but um, certainly a possibility. And you got to take care of business here. You lose this game, and that may affect that. Um, They have the best player. Uh, Their coach has been doing it for a long time for a reason. But Texas Tech is no slouch. This is a really close little game here, um, and I expect it to be that close. So I mean, points. I'm I on Kansas as a, as a one bucket game. Yeah, I'm on Kansas here because it's I mean it's basically just my line pick here. Um, but like, it, honestly, Texas Tech has maybe more better players, but I trust Kansas yeah. a little bit more because they have the best player. So. So if I'm going to call out Purdue, I kind of got to call out Texas Tech. Their four of last five games, they lost to TCU. They barely escaped Kansas State. They lose to Oklahoma State. 
and they only beat Oklahoma by one last night. So, like, Texas Tech isn't playing great basketball right now. They're a good team. They have been all year. They've been probably one of the most shocking stories with it with a new coach, uh, Mark Adams, if, I, if I'm if I'm correct there. Uh, they're a great story, but they're not playing good basketball. And give me the best player on the court with Kansas. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It wouldn't be this show if we didn't talk Big East basketball. Um, my Creighton Blue Jays. I wrote them off as dead, Newman. I thought that they lost their bet. They lost Nebhard. I thought they were done. Um, they've solidified their place in the tournament, and they're playing for a Big East championship in Madison Square Garden. Can they pull the upset today? Um, I don't think so, but I think that if they cover. Really? Yeah. No. I, did you watch any of that Villanova game last night, Villanova-UConn? I did not. Man, that Villanova was – Really, really good down the stretch. They only won by three, but they just they looked so good. Um, UConn how many points some, did they win by? They only won by three, but UConn hit some incredible shots. Yeah, um, Creighton just, can shoot though. Yeah, like, I mean that's what they, they do. They they've scored eighty five and seventy four in this tournament, so the NBA yeah. arena certainly has uh, has not affected their shots uh, whatsoever. People love, people love to shoot in New York there. <laughs> And New York loves shooters, uh, yeah. but no, I, I I have to continue to fade my Blue Jays. It, it hurts my soul. Is this the first game we're disagreeing on, by the way? I think it is. It might be. It might be. Um, but okay, you're picking Creighton. I'm picking Villanova. I'm taking, I'm taking Cre- Creighton in the points. Yes. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I think Connor Gillespie, man, he's just so solid. That's what marches. He, he literally came back for this. There's no way he's, he's not. Winning I'm not saying game. they're not going to win the game. I'm not saying they're not going to win. I'm just saying they're not going to cover. <laughs> we we will see. We will see. Um, Jay Wright, again, uh, n- no offense to Coach McDermott for Creighton. I Again, I, I love his scheme. I love him as a coach. But um, give, me, give me Villanova, despite kind of a big, big line for a final. All right, let's jump to ACC, your, your neck of the woods there. Um, Virginia Tech, kind of similar to Indiana, kind of similar to – Texas A&M, no one even thought Virginia Tech would be in the conversation, yet they storm all the way to the ACC final um, against Duke, who just is scoring about a million points a game. Um, can Virginia Tech, because they still got a win to get in. Um, they they, they are. I mean, maybe. They, right now, Lenardi has them as first team out. Again, they need to be a team watching for those bid stealers. They're going to be watching TV all day of of SLU and, and SMU. Um, I think they get blown out. I think this is uh, – they won by double digits earlier in the year. Duke is just on a roll, Newman. I know you hate yeah. to say it, but they're on a roll. I don't I don't know that they get blown out. I think that Duke can cover the six. I think – I feel like they, they they're playing like they're on a mission. Yep. Uh, after last night's game, they interviewed uh, what's his name, uh, Banchero, mm-hmm. and they they go uh, they asked uh, who do you want to play in the final, and most of the time players are just like, oh, we're just gonna focus on ourselves, blah blah blah. You know the whole cliche. Yep. He goes, no, nah, we want North Carolina. Yep. <laughs> well, unfortunately, you're not gonna get North Carolina. You get Virginia Tech, and uh, I don't know if they it, like Virginia Tech's gonna take that as a slight because it's not really aimed at them. Um, it's aimed at you know North Carolina. They wanted to yeah. avenge avenge the loss of, that uh, that North Carolina handed out to, to Coach K and Duke on his last time at Cameron. Um, <clears throat> but Duke's super motivated, like you said. They're they're playing for a lot. They have a chance to get a one seed here. Um, Virginia Tech's been playing multiple days in this tournament. They didn't have either by, uh, I don't think. So yeah, this talk about is- tired legs. I mean, you brought it up in the uh, in the Arkansas Texas A and M game. Duke is going to run. Um, I don't yeah. think Virginia Tech has the athletes or the legs under him. Um, and the thing is, Duke, like, in order to play Duke, you, or in order to beat Duke, you got to get to, like, 70, 75 points. Yep. Um, minimum, right? Sometimes you got to get to 80 or 90. And I just don't see Virginia Tech being able to score at that at that rate. Um, Duke can throw a lot of def- different defenses at you. Not that Virginia Tech's coach isn't able to handle that and stuff. But it's just going to, you know, it's going to slow the game down a little bit um, on that end of the court. And they're they're just too efficient offensively. Um, So I'm on Duke here. 
Uh, I think they definitely are going to cover that six points. And I mean, the, we'll see if they get a, they'll, they'll, I mean, they very well may give Duke the, the number one seed just because it's coach K's last year and all that stuff. And they a little plan, to, yeah, little plan. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Despite, despite, despite the fact that coach K is honestly does a lot of abominable shit. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. Tell us how you really feel. All right. I saved my <laughs> upset special for the last uh, last game of the day, the Pac-12 championship. Number 13, US or UCLA, playing number two, Arizona. Um, UCLA beat Arizona by 13. They split. Each team won, won their home game. Um, but, man, I, I love Mick Cronin. This team did it last year. I think it's one of those. They've been there. They did that. It doesn't have the juice Michigan State and Indiana do, does. Um, this is only plus 105. I mean, this is almost a pick 'em. Uh, but give me UCLA just because they have the players that did it. They have the coach that did it. Um, and Ar- Ar- Arizona, I'm not ready to call them a pretender, but, man, they, they kind of let you down uh, in the biggest games. Why, why do you like McCronin so much? Is it the Napoleon syndrome that he's got going on? I don't know. He was great. He was great at Cincinnati. Um, he's just a really good coach. I, I wanted him to go to come to IU. Um, I mean, I just, I don't get the antics Archie. on the sideline, all the little animations that he has going on, like for no reason. It's, it's super annoying to watch a game because they a literally just animated guy. They, you know. they literally just focus on him the whole time. And I'm like, come on, really? We don't care. We don't care. We're watching the basketball game. We don't need to see what Mick Cronin's doing every 10 minutes, whether he's picking his nose or yelling at refs, whatever he's doing. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to take the other side of this because it is a one-point game, so why not? Um, I mean, obviously UCLA is capable of deep r- turning runs. We saw them make it to the Final Four last year. Um, but uh, Arizona, like, they're they're the number one seed in this conference for – uh, and we're going to see in the tournament right now. They're, they're yeah. another team. If they lose, does Duke, does Kentucky? I mean, again, I don't remember there being this much potential movement on the one line um, in, in, in past tournaments. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, we haven't seen a lot of teams. Like yesterday was, I think they said, the most number one seeds uh, upset on the same day in conference tournament history. Love it. <laughs> Which is, I don't know, kind of fun. Um, so, I mean, that's it's it's one of those years. It's a very much so anybody can win it kind of year in college basketball. Um, I love it. And uh, but this year, I'm going for for the Pac-12 here. I'm going to say that Arizona winds up taking this one, um, but I expect UCLA to make a deep tournament run as well. So, got it. All right, let's do some quick NHL hits here. Um, Blues and Preds, two teams only separated by three points in the standings. Uh, the Predators are at home, so they're the favorite here. Um, give me the Preds. Uh, the, the Blues are beaten up a little bit. Um, and the, the Preds, they have one of the, be- one of the best scoring defenses. Um, and I think that uh, that's the difference in this game. You're on the puck line, right? I'm not. I'm taking Preds minus 135. Ooh, Why? <laughs> I'll just take, I'll just take the plus juice there and go puck line. <laughs> there we go. Uh, let's let's move down to an east west game. To me, the, the thing about the puck line is like an empty netter is always possible, and that yes. shifts it, the, the, that shifts it in your favor. And it's just I'll take I'll take the the chances that that's going to hit, and I'll you know uh, take that plus money. Like why why bet my, uh, you know one thirty five there for? I think this might go to overtime. This might be a. Uh... <laughs> It might. Um, haven't really Blues played team. a bunch of games this week, like on the yeah. road and stuff too? So, yeah, this um, is their, that's not that's not that's not great game this week. Like Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Yeah. Um, Rangers versus Stars. I'm pulling for Dallas simply because uh, the Penguins are charging against the Rangers in the standings. The Rangers have lost uh, two in a row, and the Stars have won three of four. I am taking the puck line on this one. Plus 200 is phenomenal for a home team um, against a team that's on a little bit of a schneid. Are you with me here on the puck line? No. No, the, the Rangers, Rangers are good. The Rangers are really good. Their goalies played awesome this year. Um, so I, I'm going to take the plus juice on them getting the um, yeah. money line. There we go. I hate you. Um, I'll let you talk about <laughs> this next one. 
Um, your Lightning uh, are road favorites uh, going into a desperate Edmonton team. They've lost three of four and have fallen out of the playoffs. Do, do the Lightning um, win uh, against Edmonton today? Um, they've already lost two games this week, uh, the Lightning have. so uh, And they've gotten kind of blown out a little bit. They're tired. It's a six-game road trip with uh, Amelie Arena being taken up for the SEC tournament. Uh, that means that they can't play at home. Um, <clears throat> it's one of those where you've lost a couple games in a row and you probably shouldn't win this game. But uh, that all being said, this is too professional and too veteran a team uh, to lose three in a row here against a team that is kind of fading in the Oilers. So I'm on the bolts. There we go. I will, I will take that puck, puck line. There we go. Uh, I'm staying away from this game. Like you said, tired legs. Uh, uh, like We could name this podcast Tired Legs. Um, I don't love the lightning in this one, but they are the better team. So I'm just staying away from it um, in, in, in general. Uh, but again, Edmonton needs it. Uh, let's do two games in the NBA. Um, two teams really close in the standings. Um, we have the Cavs versus the Bulls. Number four and number six team in the East. Bulls are a four-point favorite. Um, can the Cavs pull an upset today, Newman? I'll take the Cavs with the points here. Um, I think they can pull an upset. And, uh, you know, just, I don't know. To, to me, the points is that's 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 too much of a swing. I, I don't I think that's too many points there. So I'll take the points. Perfect. Uh, and I'm going to take an upset here in the next one. Bucks going out west to Golden State. Warriors getting two points at home. Um, I can't believe I'm seeing that Newman. Can, are, are the Bucks really the favorite here out west? I mean, they're you know obviously the reigning NBA champs, and they have Giannis. And when you play a team against you know when you play against a team like the Warriors, you want to bring all that energy and, and really show up. So I expect the Bucks to do that. But on that that being said, I'm still going to take the Warriors here, uh, getting yeah. the points. That's just We're getting too, yeah, too, getting too, plus money. Too, too easy. Too easy. Too easy, just like Indiana taking care of Iowa today, Newman. Um, too easy, just like the drinks I will be having in about an hour at Kilroy's Bar downtown Indianapolis. Um, I will be heading there as soon as I get off this call. Uh, Newman, you have a wonderful rainy Saturday? You just going to hunker down and watch some sports today? N nah, I got a baby shower to go to. Ah, there we go. You always got something, Mr. Popular. All right. Everyone, enjoy. This is literally the pregame to March Madness. There are some amazing storylines. Enjoy the day. Newman and I will be back here Monday doing a first and second round breakdown, just like we did last year, and we'll also give our final four picks and champions. So stay tuned for that. Until, until then, everyone have a wonderful weekend. See ya.